Okay, with the last video, we went through and we drew all the Lewis structures. We did the bond dipoles, which you see in red here on this slide, and we talked about the formal charges uh, in green, and you guys checked all your answers. So at this point, we are ready to start using this sheet. Back when I asked you to print the worksheets for Lewis structures, there were two sheets to print, and this was the other one. So uh, you need to be able to look at that because I can't stay on this slide the whole time that we're doing uh, the next part. So we're still on the worksheet. The next three areas we need to cover, and we're gonna kind of do this all together because it goes in line with that worksheet and it's really very easy. And that is to name the electronic geometry around the central atom, uh, give the hybridization for the central atom, and then it says name the shape around the central atom and shape can also be called molecular geometry. Um, now, notice in each one of these, it talks about a central atom. So you do have to identify a central atom in each Lewis structure. If you're wondering what the central atom is, you would ask, uh, say for example, in hydrogen peroxide right here. Well, I would tell you in hydrogen peroxide, you need to either use this O as your central atom or use this O as your central atom. Um, in the next one, C2H2, I would tell you just pick one of the C's, either this one or this one, obviously, okay? Sometimes it's easy, like on this, these right here, it's easy to tell that N is the central atom in both. Um, also, I wanna point out to y'all that there are some Lewis structures that are extremely complex that do not have, um, do not have a single central atom. Uh, I was gonna see if I had one on file from, yeah, I do. Like this Lewis structure, I just wanna show it to you briefly. Um, it, that looks unlike anything we've drawn. There's not one central atom here. Everywhere you see this happening, that's actually a carbon on all those places. And so you could name a hybridization for each one of those carbons, okay? So some molecules are really complex and they don't have a central atom. But for the purposes of learning what we're doing, um, we will look for a central atom and we'll all be focused on the same. Now, to do this, you have to count electron domains around the central atom. Okay, well, what is an electron domain? An electron domain is a place where there are electrons. Um, a lone pair of electrons counts as one domain. A single bond counts as one domain. A double bond counts as one domain. A triple bond counts as one domain. And in that rare case where you have a single electron by itself, like in NO2, if you'll remember the, the radical, the free radical, a single electron also counts as one domain. So yes, everything counts as one domain. So why did we make a list if it's all one domain? Because if we were in class, I would get to hear y'all do this, but even at home, you are going to at times be tempted to look at a double bond and count it as two domains, because it's a double bond, but it only counts as one domain. So that's why we have the list, so that when you make an error, we can look back here and remember, oh, everything's just one domain. So. I'm going to redraw water up here for you and show you how um, each of these applies to water, how you answer electronic geometry, hybridization, and shape. Um, look at water on your sheet. It looks like this, okay? First off, what is the central atom? It's O. How many domains are around O? One, that's a lone pair. Two, that's another lone pair. Three, that's a single bond. Four, 
That's a single bond. So the first thing you do is count the domains. There are four domains around water. Then you're looking at this sheet. If there's four domains around the central atom, that corresponds to a tetrahedral electronic geometry. And you see that filled in on your sheet, tetrahedral. If there's four domains around something, a tetrahedral geometry takes on what hybridization? SP3. And you see that on your sheet, that the hybridization for the O in water is SP3 hybridized. Okay, that takes care of tetrahedral and of sp3. Now the next one says name the shape around the central atom. So to do the shape, we're gonna have to go from here and we're gonna have to narrow it down here on the table. So look at oxygen, there's four domains, clearly. How many of those domains are bonding domains? Of the four, two of them are bonding domains. So of the four, if two domains are bonding, that corresponds to a bent shape of the molecule. And at this point, it's really helpful um, for me to be in class with you guys and show you what a bent molecule looks like because I would be doing it with model kits. Okay, so what I've done is found some images on uh, to sh try to show you what tetrahedral and why it's bent. And that, that will help make this sheet make more sense because these names seem maybe foreign to you right now. Um, in the classroom, you would not have this sheet to use when you took your test. You would have to have all these. You would just know them. Okay, I realize that I can't control that when you're taking your test at home. But let's talk about what where the name tetrahedral comes from, okay? Um, these are the two images I wanted to use. Y'all, methane. You should know, because we've, we've talked about methane a lot in class, and so you should know, even though that's not our typical way of naming things, it's an organic compound, so it's the proper way to name organic, but y'all should know the formula for methane, okay? Methane CH4. And when you know that methane is CH4, you should be able to rather quickly in your head envision that uh, Lewis structure. Okay, I mean, you should be able to walk through those steps in your head um, within a, less than a minute and come up with that Lewis structure for methane. So based on what we're doing right now, do you guys see that C is the central atom and there are one, two, three, four domains around the central atom. All four of those domains are bonding. So referencing your sheet, that would be um, a tetrahedral geometry. Th these two diagrams are showing you tetrahedral. So the reason it's tetrahedral, when we draw these on paper, when we draw these Lewis structures on paper, it looks like kind of a T-shape, doesn't it? It looks like you have some kind of central atom and there's a bond going out the top, out the bottom, to the left and to the right, like a plus sign, okay? But that's because we're drawing them flat on a two-dimensional piece of paper. Molecules are not two-dimensional. They're three dimensions. And so those four domains, if you look at this structure, they're not gonna be in a T-shape. In order to get around that central atom, for those four domains that are electrons, they're all gonna repel each other. For them to be as far apart from one another as possible, they're going to take on this orientation. The name comes from the fact, you can see here, it's a tetrahedron. Do y'all see it's a four-sided figure, tetrahedron, and those are triangles, okay? So that's where the name tetrahedral comes from. And again, I'm pointing this one out because a lot of the structures are based on this. So if we consider water, uh, this central atom is O. The O is bonded to a hydrogen and a hydrogen. But see, there's a lone pair over here, and there's a lone pair over here. So all those domains influence the shape of it. 
Okay, so the electronic geometry is still tetrahedral because all the areas of the electrons are in this tetrahedral form. But when we look at the shape, the shape only considers the bonds that are involved. Okay, and so the shape of the water molecule is gonna be bent because this is its structure. Um, you have to be careful because you could draw water like so. Its Lewis structure can be properly also represented like this. And the mistake that's often made is people draw it and say, oh, that's linear. Well, that's on a two-dimensional piece of paper. You have to take that out of the paper and realize that this molecule and the one superimposed on this figure are the same molecule that when you draw it like this on a piece of paper, those H's are actually coming out of the paper at you, okay? Can you guys see that? I'm just trying to um, show you what it's like. There's some um, good YouTube channels. Uh, what is that guy? Tyler DeWitt, I think, is one of the guys who lectures chemistry on YouTube, and he's got some, uh, some great YouTube videos showing you these, uh, showing models put together. So that's how we come up with water being tetrahedral, sp3 hybridized, and that the, the shape or the geometry is bent, okay? And that's kind of using this here as a flow chart. Now, um, we're not always gonna be able to do the shape on everything, and I'll show you what what I'm talking about as we go through. Because as I said over here, the shape of a molecule comes from talking about how these, these two bonds line up with each other, right? But if you only have one bond, there's no shape to it. Because if you have, have an atom and then a bond and an atom, I mean, there's no shape. What can you do with two points besides make a straight line? Okay, so we don't typically name shapes on those. Uh, let's do a little bit of practice. Going back to where we start the worksheet. We've already talked through water. Let's look at HF, okay? For HF, I want you to focus on the F. Focus on the fluorine. What is the electronic geometry around the central atom? Well, first off, how many domains are around it? Four domains are around it. So the electronic geometry around the central atom is tetrahedral. What is, an F is the central atom. What's the hybridization around the F? It's sp3 hybridized. Okay. Of the domains around the fluorine, of the four, how many of those are bonding domains? You're, you're following your, your table. Four domains, how many of them are bonding? I gotta jump slides here, guys, to be sure you're following me. Four domains, how many of them are bonding in HF? One domain, so we might refer to that as a linear geometry, because again, what can you do with two points besides make a straight line, okay? The reason it's in parentheses is because it's not really linear, because there's not another bond over here to say that these are 180 degrees from each other, okay? Um, look at oxygen. Just pick one of the O's. Pick one of them. Let's look at this O. How many domains are around that O? There's only three domains around it. Double bond counts as one domain, not two. There's three domains around the O. According to your table, three domains corresponds to what geometry? Trigonal planar. Okay, and that should make sense because what it's saying is if you have an, an atom, okay, like an O, and there's three areas of electrons around that atom, does it make sense to y'all that this, they would just be flat on a plane and that's as far apart as they could get from each other in that shape. 
And so it would be trigonal planar. All of those domains are in the same plane. What's the hybridization? SP2. And we really wouldn't do a shape, but we could say, what would you say for the shape? We could say it's linear, okay? Because again, it's just two points. It's O and O. Okay, the next one, carbon monoxide. Um, choose carbon for your central atom. Again, if you didn't know, on a test even, if, I, I will clearly tell you what the central atom is. But if you ever were in doubt, you could always ask me. I know I won't be there when you're taking the test. But you, typically, we have to be sure we're all looking at the same thing. So look at C in carbon monoxide. How many domains are around the C? Two. There's a lone pair and a triple bond. Two domains around the C. Two domains corresponds to what electronic geometry? Linear. What's the hybridization? SP. And what's the shape? Again, you could say linear. Okay? So, at this point, what you need to do is stop the video and go and finish the sheet. Okay? I want you to... Finish your worksheet labeling electronic geometry, hybridization, and shape. And then when you pick the video up here, I'm going to go through and provide the answers for all of them. So, look, this learning this way requires discipline. You got to stop it and do it yourself. Because if you just keep watching it and write the answers down, it's, you're not going to be able to do it when it comes time to take a test. And your test is not going to be copying the ones we've already done. It's going to be looking through new ones. So, stop here at what, like at 16 minutes and 47 seconds, and keep working. Okay, so now we're ready to go through electronic geometry, hybridization, and shape for all of them. So next one we have to work together is the ammonium ion. Central atom is in. There are four domains around it, so it has a tetrahedral, electronic geometry. It is sp3 hybridized, and the shape around the central atom is also tetrahedral. Okay, uh, we skip the sodium sulfide. I told you earlier we'd skip everything till the very last blank on that one. Next we go to SO3. S is the central atom. There's three domains around the S. So that corresponds to a trigonal planar electronic geometry. Um, it's sp2 hybridized, and the shape is also trigonal planar. For the chlorite ion, chlorine is your central atom. It's tetrahedral, sp3, and bent. Sulfite is the next one. Sulfur is your central atom. Four domains are around it, so it's tetrahedral. SP3 and trigonal pyramidal or pyramidal, however you want to say it. CH2O, C is your central atom. There's three domains around the C. This trigonal planar, sp2, and trigonal planar. Okay, the next one's carbon dioxide. C is your central atom. There's two domains around the C that corresponds to a linear electronic geometry. Um, the hybridization is sp. And the shape of that molecule is linear. Thiocyanate, C is your central atom. It does not matter which structure you look at, you're going to have the same answer, no matter which way you draw it. Uh, C has two domains around it, so both of them are linear, SP, and linear. Next, we have the nitrate ion. N is the central atom. There's three domains around the end. 
in the nitrogen. So that's trigonal planar, uh, sp2. And the shape is also trigonal planar. Nitrogen dioxide is the next one. Three domains around the nitrogen. One, two, three, because even a single electron counts as one domain. That's trigonal planar. It is still sp2 hybridized, but this one is bent. Okay, hydrogen peroxide is the next one. You just need to pick one of the O's. It doesn't matter which one. Just look at one oxygen. There's four domains around the oxygen. That means it has a tetrahedral electronic geometry, which is sp3 hybridized. And the shape of this molecule is bent. And so that's why, guys, I drew it zigzagged. I knew it was going to be bent. But you need to really realize and recognize that even had you drawn it like so, if you follow on the flow chart, you will still come up with the fact that that is bent around the O, that it's not linear. Okay, looking at the next one, the last one, C2H2, just pick one of the C's to look at. If we're going to look at this C, there's just two domains around it. Uh, that corresponds to a linear electronic geometry. It's sp hybridized, and the shape of this is also linear.